Jeffrey, do you agree with BlackRock? Well, look, I think Larry Fink is going to be criticized, but it's a wise move. I mean, times are changing and governance practices need to keep up. Think of the world of business today. It's the pace of change is 10 times faster. Uh, disruption and competition are coming from all angles. Economic institutions of capitalism are literally under attack. So I think the board members do need to step up and they need to manage the risk better and they need to be more focused and spend more time in a smaller handful of companies. They need to go deeper, not wider. So I think it's a brilliant move by Larry. It reduces the risk and it raises the ceiling for all parties. Jeff, I was, go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, Jeff, do you think this is actually, when you have a heavy hitter like BlackRock come out and uh, make rules like this, do you think it actually changes governance at companies? I do, I th and I think that governance is positive and it will drive economic value. I think what it's going to do is force or allow board members to do a deeper dive uh, and not only manage the strategy because it's changing so much more rapidly, but really the people side. So it gives them a chance to focus on CEO succession planning and really succession planning for all key positions throughout the company. And that takes time. You know, there's a massive inflow of talent both in companies and out of companies. And really, uh, the board's number one responsibility, in my opinion, is to focus on that leadership pipeline. And that requires getting to know the people, uh, challenging them, developing deeper bonds, making sure they don't leave to go to another company. So I think, again, it, this governance is going to drive economic value. You know, Jeff, it's interesting or maybe a little bit ironic, uh, the CEOs that we cited who would kind of fall afoul of, uh, of this BlackRock rule, like Bob Iger, uh, Stephen Easterbrook of McDonald's, they've done a great job for their own company shareholders over a relatively long period of time. Um, and I guess one could argue also that they derive benefits from having exposure to other businesses and, uh, and, and learning about them. I'm thinking about Iger on Apple's board and things like that. Yeah, they, they do. But and there's always a great argument to make for getting more exposure and learning from different businesses and widening your perspective. But there are ways to do that on average where they don't necessarily uh, where they don't have governance responsibilities, too. And I think on balance, spreading yourself too thin as a CEO uh, by being on different boards where you have governance responsibility and shareholder responsibility uh, just has too much risk. So on balance, uh, yes, some CEOs can do it very well and all CEOs can learn from it. But I think there are other ways that CEOs can broaden their perspectives and learn without putting the risk of shareholder value at risk. Yeah. And, and Jeff, just to wrap all of this up, um, I mean, is there data out there? Have you been tracking this yourself in terms of, I guess, the impact of, uh, of CEOs when they are on multiple boards and whether that overextension does translate to poor investments? It's hard to track it because times, again, have, are changing. And the pace of change has sped up literally tenfold in the last 10 years. And when I say that, I mean, you know, not only from a strategic uh, and a disruption point of view, but from talent coming in and out so quickly. So it's really hard to do an apples to apples comparison. But just by qualitatively talking to a lot of board members, uh, you know, the number one the number one thing they say is they want the board members to develop stronger relationships with these rising stars, the future leaders of the company, and that just takes time. Jeff Kahn, thank you for joining us today.